right now, baby. Welcome to another edition of Pound for Pound Picks, a very special edition of Pound for Pound Picks, proudly presented by Bet99. Very special because UFC 299 is upon us in row. I got to say, on paper at least, one of the best cards the UFC has ever put together. Would you agree? Yep. Uh, absolutely. I think I'm more excited for this than the UFC 300. Uh, it was great, too, that we kind of had a week-ish card last week because that makes me even more uh, – uh, fired up for this one, but it uh, it should be terrific. I'm really excited. Okay, so eight total picks for us. We're in agreement on a few, so let's start like we usually do at the top with the main event. We have Sean O'Malley looking to defend his title and avenge the only loss in his UFC career. He comes in as a pretty big favorite here, minus 270. Merlin Bear on the comeback at plus 215. So I like O'Malley, but I'm not going to come on here and give out a minus 270 bet, so we got to find a more creative way to bet him. The way I will do so is taking the win by decision at plus 120. So yes, indeed, O'Malley is a sniper, but Vera has never been Snipe, this is a very durable fighter who he has never been finished, and he has shown a bit of a pattern to get stronger as a fight goes on. So I do think if he can weather that storm early, avoid the big KO punch, then he can bring this fight into the championship rounds. And as we get deeper and deeper into the fight, the energy gets zapped a little bit, making a finish uh, a lot less likely. So the reason I like O'Malley here is I think the fight's going to be contested on the feet. So the majority of it, and I do expect him to be in control. He lands a lot more. He gets hit a lot less. Uh, Vera actually has a negative striking differential in the UFC. That's not very good. Um, he's a lot less accurate with his strikes as well. Of course, you do go back and take a look at the first fight that the guys had. And obviously that injury O'Malley suffered, uh, that made a significant difference in the fight. To be fair, he did get a little bit rattled by it. Maybe that was due to some inexperience. So Vera did win that fight fair and square, but I do think O'Malley avenges that loss here on Saturday night. Ro, this is a bet that we are in agreement on. Uh, why do you like this bet? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the same reasons. I mean, I'd never describe an injury win in a combat sport as a fluke, uh, but I don't really see that same uh, victory happening again for, uh, for Vera. I mean, uh, there was uh, kind of a rare occurrence when you land a low kick uh, right to the peroneal nerve. Uh, you know, O'Malley kept rolling his ankle after that, never really got his footing under him. Uh, but before that injury, O'Malley looked pretty sharp. Uh, I thought he was winning the stand-up battle. He was stringing together combinations. He was uh, avoiding most of the damage from Vera except for those leg kicks. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, that happened four years ago, and I would say O'Malley has really improved as a fighter since then, appears to be hitting his peak. Uh, Vera hasn't really shown much improvement. I mean, Cheeto has been around the UFC for a while now. I think he's been in the UFC for a decade, uh, but he really hasn't shown a whole lot of improvement over the last uh, few years. And he also, he tends to be a slow starter who gives up early rounds. He's also hittable and he struggles against the guys who move well and can pick him apart at range. We saw that in the Sandhagen fight. Uh, we saw that against Jose Aldo as well. I mean, even in the fights against Rob Font and Dominic Cruz, where he ended up winning, both of those guys had significant advantages in terms of uh, significant strikes. Uh, he needed to land those power shots in order to pick up the win in both of those fights. And, uh, you know, of course, he has, uh, you know, a chance of finishing here. This guy has a high finish rate. But you look at his last seven fights, he only has two wins by stoppage over that span. Those came against Cruz and uh, came against Frankie Edgar. So two washed up guys who don't have a chin yeah. anymore. Uh, now he's taking on O'Malley. O'Malley can move at range, can pick him apart. So I think O'Malley gets the win here. But like you pointed out, Vera's a very durable guy himself, and he's never been finished in his career. So I'm expecting this fight to go the distance and O'Malley to come out on top. Okay, next up, let's drop down to the co-main event. And the odds for this fight are going to surprise some people. Uh, Dustin Poirier coming in as a plus-175 underdog, taking on Benoit Saint-Denis, minus-215 favorite. So these odds are going to surprise a lot of people because this is a step up in competition, a massive step up in competition for Benoit Saint-Denis here. Maybe a case of out with the old, in with the new, though. Uh, Dustin Poirier coming off a KO loss. He's been in a lot of firefights over the years. Uh, Saint Denis, about six years younger, undefeated in five straight fights, finishes in all five fights. So the hungry young lion looking to take the spot of Dustin Poirier here. Uh, I like Saint Denis to win. He is my pick, but uh, I'm not betting him at that number. I don't like those odds of minus 215, so I'll be sitting this one out. Uh, Ro, what do you make of the co-main event here? 
Yeah, I mean, this is a tough one. Uh, I was on Saint Denis at first. Uh, he, I think he opened at minus uh, 148, right around yeah. there. And, you know, I thought that was decent value, but uh, money has really poured in on him. So uh, Poirier was uh, plus 124 when he opened. Now Poirier's plus 175. Uh, you know, I think that's a bit too much of a swing. Uh, you know, and you look at Saint Denis, and he's coming off a win against Matt Frivola. He closed at uh, minus 225 against Frivola. So we're seeing almost the uh, same line for Frivola as uh, Poirier. And I think that's a bit whack. Uh, you know, it's one thing to keep in mind that, yeah, there is sharp money that has come in on Saint Denis, but uh, also a lot of tickets have come in on Saint Denis. So that's, uh, you know, that's uh, the public vote. Uh, that's the public betting on that. And I think a lot of that actually has to do with the Volkanovsky uh, Tapuria fight. Uh, kind of the same situation or a similar situation. You've got, uh, you know, two fighters that are 35 years old coming off an ugly uh, knockout, taking on a young up and comer who finishes fights. Uh, but there are also some big differences between uh, Volk in that spot and Poirier in this spot. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Volkanovski, and he was coming off, uh, you know, he took just four, a little bit under four months off after his knockout loss, uh, whereas uh, Poirier took out more than seven months off. So that's a big difference there. Uh, the other thing is that uh, Tapuria had dominant wins against uh, Josh Emmett, uh, dominant win against Bryce Mitchell, both top 10 guys. Uh, now, Sandini has really not fought many guys at all. I mean, Frivola is probably the best win on his resume, and uh, Steamroller was a borderline top 15 guy. So this is a huge step up in him. Uh, you look at Sandini, and he definitely has the grappling advantage, but he's also an aggressive striker who can be a bit reckless in the pocket, relies on his chin a bit too much. And I still think Poirier has crisper boxing and better hands. So at this price, I'm leaning towards Poirier. Uh, Poirier inside the distance is a nice number two. We're getting that at plus 350. Uh, but, uh, you know, I really like to the under uh, 2.5 rounds if you can get it. Most books have this at under 1.5 rounds at, with a lot of juice uh, on both sides. But if you can get the alternate rounds under 2.5, it's about minus 140 right now. I think that'll be a nice play. Because either we're going to see uh, Poirier get finished, uh, you know, it might be the end of the road for him. Or we're going to see Poirier come out on top and knock out an aggressive San Denis in the first couple of rounds, I think. Yeah, we have seen Poirier bounce back uh, plenty of times in yeah. his career. I'd be very interested to see what these odds were had Poirier not been finished by Justin Gaethje his last yeah. time out. Uh, so a very interesting one there. Another interesting one here at 170, Michael Venom Page coming up to the big leagues. It's always interesting when they start from another promotion, comes into the UFC. He's taking on Kevin Holland. I'm going to take Kevin Holland to defeat him at minus 135. Quite simply, I think Holland has more pass to victory. He has a nice mix of uh, KOs and submission wins on his resume. He's also been competing against a much, much, much higher level of competition compared to Page over the past couple of years. Take a look at Page's fight logs. Not exactly a who's who of elite talent. You'd have to be a hardcore fight fan to recognize a lot of the opponents that Page has gone up against. Uh, he hasn't been extremely active over the years here, uh, over the past couple of years, he's been off for about a year now. And like I said, this is the big leagues. I think Holland takes this fight extremely seriously. And uh, I do think he takes care of business here on Saturday night. Okay, bro. Uh, another banger here. Gilbert Burns versus Jack Adela. Madalena, uh, a bit of a toss-up. Uh, a tough one to pick. Gilbert Burns on his home turf here. We both have a pick for this one. Uh, get us started off. Yeah, I'm going with JDM here, going with the younger fighter, 10-year uh, age difference. This is another one with a lot of line movement. Uh, this was close to a pick -em when it opened. Uh, a lot of money coming in on Della Madalena. He was as high as minus 180 at some books at this time. You can still get him at minus 155 over at Bet99, though. Uh, one of the best numbers on the board, so uh, definitely jump on that if you can. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think people are on the right side here. You look at Burns, and you know he's got fantastic grappling credentials, but his offensive wrestling isn't always the best. And when he does get guys down to the mat, he doesn't typically hunt for submissions. He just kind of lays there. Uh, we saw that in the Wonder Boy fight. And uh, you know, I think uh, JDM has good takedown defense. Uh, he's guy could kind of get up once he does get taken down. And I think there's going to be a lot of uh, boxing and stand up in this one. And Burns has heavy hands, but he also throws a lot of looping shots. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he tends to throw like one or two shots at a time. Doesn't really string together combinations. Uh, JDM throws really good combinations and he has a very sharp jab. And we've seen that really hurt Burns in the past. Uh, that combined with the massive age difference here, I think uh, JDM gets the win. And uh, I think he's still getting good value at minus 155. 
Okay, a uh, bet I like for this fight. I like it to go over two and a half rounds coming in at plus 105. So each man absolutely capable of getting a finish, but uh, neither man very easy to put away at all, which is often the case when you have two high-ranked, highly skilled fighters going after it. Uh, so you take a look at Gilbert Burns. He's been finished just once in his last 12 fights. I came versus a prime Camaro Usman, he's had a lot of uh, tough opponents in that span as well. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, Jorge Masvidal, at the time he fought him, uh, Masvidal wasn't elite by any means. But uh, Hamza, Hamza Shemaev, uh, Wonder Boy Thompson as well. JDM has gone 16 straight fights without getting finished. So I think Burns would be wise to try to get this one to the mat. So I think there's potential that we're going to see a lot of grappling exchanges, whether they be standing or on the ground, that are going to chew up a lot of clock. That's how we fought both Masvidal and Wonder Boy. So I think uh, we're going to see a lot of clock get chewed up that way. And uh, like I said, both of these guys hard to put away. A little bit of plus money there, plus 105 to go over two and a half rounds. Okay, uh, moving on to the first fight of the main card, 135 weight class. Uh, one of my favorite fighters, a man who I have lost a lot of money on over the past couple of years. We'll get into that momentarily. But uh, Piotr Jan coming in at minus 120. He's taking on Song Yedong. We are in agreement uh, for this one. Uh, break down your bet for us. You know, it's, uh, it's funny you say that about uh, Piotr Jan because uh, Song Yedong is one of my favorite fighters. I've loved this guy for years since he came into the UFC at like 21. Huge fan of him, but I am betting on Jan in this one. Uh, Jan opened at about minus 163. Money's poured in on Song. So now we're getting Jan at close to a pick em price. And I think that's fantastic value. I think people are putting a little bit too much stock into Jan's current losing streak. And it's not like he's getting, you know, demolished in these fights. You know, it'd be one thing if he was getting knocked out or dominated. Uh, you could say he was maybe dominated against uh, in his last fight against Mirab uh, Dvalishvili. But uh, Dvalishvili just kind of spam wrestled. And that can sometimes happen against those elite wrestlers. He just didn't let him get off any offense in that one. Just kind of took him down over and over again. But you look at the other two fights in that losing streak. Aljamain Sterling, Sean O'Malley. So the two, you know, two of the top fighters in this division. And they were both extremely close decision losses where I personally thought Jan actually took them. Uh, you know, obviously he didn't. He didn't get the win in the end. But I, I you know, I'm not going to uh, give him a negative, a big negative on his uh, resume for that. Uh, and I'm going to take into account that, you know, he was very competitive in those wins. Whereas I don't think Song Yudong has really ever faced anyone, uh, you know, who are quite at that level before. Uh, you look at it from a matchup perspective, and I think uh, Jan's got the superior wrestling. He's got better footwork. He's got better striking defense. So I think he gets the win here. And uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take that uh, money moving in the opposite direction. Yeah, I'll echo a lot of what you just said. And let's not forget about the uh, the first fight against Aljamain Sterling, who looked like he was well on his way to a victory. Then he had the illegal knee, which totally changed the course of his career, really. And then he fights Sterling again, a razor-thin split decision. Who knows if it was a different set of judges that night. He very well could have won. And then I think he got flat-out robbed versus Sean O'Malley. Uh, really dominated with his takedowns. Uh, he did pretty good with his takedowns in the first Sterling fight as well, so don't sleep on that. So, yeah, I do think this is a pretty big step up in competition for Yadong. Uh, Piotr Jan, more accurate striker. And like I said, don't sleep on those takedowns at all. So he's had about a year off, so hopefully he can make some tweaks and some improvements. He tends to be a little bit of a slow starter. They talk about how he likes to download information from his opponent in the first round, but that can come back to bite you in a three round fight, uh, especially if it is a fight that goes to the uh, judges. So yeah, I like you to get back on track. I still very much think he's an elite fighter. I think some people yeah. will just look at his record and say, Oh, he's, he's one in four. So uh, he's not very good anymore. Or he might be washed up. It's not like yeah. he's, he didn't look too good in his last fight to be fair, but it's not like he's getting destroyed versus the elite competition he's going up against. So I like him to get back on track. So there you have it. Eight total picks. From Ro and I, bro, this is awesome. We have this and uh, UFC 300 in about, what, five weeks here? So a uh, great time to be a UFC fan, a great time to be a UFC better. If you're looking to get some bets in for this card or for anything in the world of sports, make sure you check out Bet99, a great-looking sports book, a great easy-to-use interface with a great offering across all sports. So uh, that's it, Ro. Thanks for joining. Best of luck. On those bets, especially the O'Malley and Yon yeah. ones, because I'm and on enjoy them. yourself uh, down in Florida catching the fight. That's going to be pretty fun to watch live.
Indeed, yes. Uh, I'm hopping on a plane on Thursday to head down to uh, Miami to watch these fights in person. I, I attended UFC 200 in Las Vegas a couple of years ago, uh, which was a massive card. Of course, uh, the main event fell through. It was supposed to be John Jones versus Daniel Cormier. We remember what happened there. Uh, but still, that was an awesome experience. This should be a great experience as well. Uh, so make sure you follow uh, me on X and Instagram, JTFOZ. I'm going to have a bunch of content throughout the weekend. Okay, so that does it for Pam for Pam Picks. Thank you guys very much for watching. Ro, thanks for joining. Best of luck with your bets, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Woo!